Hey, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to episode five of Tame Wild, the Home of Beasts. Today, we greet a big wave of new arrivals. The Rakust and Normal from Sandwalls are arriving. So far, I am quite amused that we have not a single Rockholdian dwarf among us, but we got a really, really big wave of new people. We have now a army of legendary miners so if push comes to shove these guys are able to defend the fortress on their own we also have unip the legendary weaponsmith she's uh, around quite often we got here a legendary bone carver named deller boot dagger who are you deller among us since the lone anvil are we so Year 106 must have been one of the last people that came to Sandwalls before they hit 200 souls. So we have also Leetust, a legendary woodcrafter. So also with us since the Lone Anvil, even since the autumn of year 100. So that has been one of the very, very first immigration waves that came our way. 16 years with our playthroughs now already. I think Leetust has potential to be our Dwarf of the Day. Well, we got Tyrus to the Surgeon. That name rings oddly familiar as well. Ah, oh, yeah, here. Spouse of Rakust. So, definitely a Sandwalls Dwarf. So, yeah, a lot of Sandwallians. Okay, so what's up today? I did this. Look at it. Isn't it fancy? So this will be our new living area for the city with a specialty that we're going to have our corridors and whatnot pipe into the dining hall and into the tavern of this area. That's uh, quite a lot of bedrooms in the making, but considering how many new faces are arriving, this is just necessary. So I just realized that more people have arrived. So Rakus to the second, I mean the Rakus's, uh, where there's one Rakus, usually the other one is right around the corner. And yeah. It is what it is. All right. So far, we have also a lot of children in the new, among the new arrivals. So let's assign the new small animals to the pasture where they belong. Not the kitten, though. There we go. Make sure that these grazing animals get what they need. And the crafts dwarfs are petitioning for a guild hall. Also worth mentioning is that we now have to face invaders. There's um, no way for us to, to avoid that now. So, Will, what are we going to do? After 50 people, you're... You're, you're eligible for snatchers and the like. Well, one thing at a time. Crafts Dwarf Skilled Hall. We don't really have a room specified for that yet. Neither do we have an idea for the area for that. But, uh, well... Let's go that way. There's plenty of tin to excavate there. And we're going to make a fancy little hall there. We definitely will extract the metal, because everything else would be, in my opinion, foolish. And let's bring up some sandstone walls. Yeah, we're going to make them go like that. So we're forcing them to use some boulders. It doesn't matter that much. It's slightly inefficient, but that's about it. So, yeah, slate flooring, just what I wanted to do. There we go. So, the Crafts Dwarf Skilled Hall. Well, 
I am slightly concerned about the fast growth of this place. After all, we don't have any form of defense for ourselves, so this makes me kind of weary. Overlapping meeting area. Oh, I see. So, here we go. That's no longer necessary. So, the central meeting area for this, uh... Yeah, here we go. It's overlapping a little bit with the uh, bedrooms there, but it doesn't matter. So, engravers. We have not a single legendary one yet, so it's time to put Momus into the glorious task. Okay. Because we have to pimp up that guild hall. It's a small time guild hall, and uh, I probably will put down no engravings on the southern parts of the walls, as this gives me the option to later expand here without destroying art. Okay, it's also about time to build finally or will. So, the cistern is uh, nicely filling up. And now we're going to build some slate floors here. And the wells go there. Let's line that with a nice gabbro flooring. And then I hope that we are going to see the construction of the... Uh, of the magma workshop rather sooner than later oh boy and the miners i mean there are a few did a wonderful job so we're going to carve out the metals here as they are way too valuable they are way way too valuable all righty There we go. Meanwhile, there is yet another flock of unicorns uh, prancing around here, and I feel as if my capacities are really getting getting burdened here, or I don't know how to call it, but uh, it really shows that this uh, puts a pretty heavy strain on my on my fort. So. I think we can safely pasture a few more rhinos on this. So let's see. Another trained one. And another trained one. So it begins. I am honestly considering piping attackers through this entrance here. leaving only this one open look at the i mean the well-trained ones we can totally let them live there but i think we need to set up another unicorn meadow right next to that so we're gonna go oh let's do this like that here's the unicorn meadow I mean, you always have imagined a unicorn meadow to be more of a serene and uh, foresty place, I bet. But, well, it's dwarven unicorns, my man. Dwarven unicorns. They behave different than regular unicorns. So, yeah, I am at the point where I can actually let them out of their cages if I wanted to. But uh, not quite. We are going to separate the rhino population as well into war rhinos and regular domesticated rhinos. So here goes. Yeah, there's a lot of work to, to, to do these days. Yeah, it's finally happening. Just as I uh, thought in the previous episode, it's just not happening because of the lack of a well. Obviously you can't do jack without a well. Uh, you, can't do, you can't pull water without a well, huh? Especially if there's no water source around anywhere. 
That's been really on me. So, I want to use for the Guild Ball to honor their um, craft a little bit. I want to build the trade posts out of uh, nickel silver bars. These aren't tremendously valuable or anything, but they should add in some extra value into the guild hall, as we are right now struggling. The art of Momus is not so super thrilling and doesn't add in insane amounts of value. A workshop out of metal does add in some value. Also, again, not too tremendous uh, amounts, but, uh, well, at least 15 dwarf books. Regoth has been possessed. Let's see. So, let's see. Somebody said to me that... Oh, no. She already got claimed the workshop. I read somewhere that before they have claimed the workshop, you can assign them what kind of materials they ought to use. I want to use I want to try that out once. Whether or not this is a rumor, I want to know. Look at them. They're socializing right next to the rhinos. Huh. Brilliant. So, well, we have to furnish these guild halls ASAP. All right. Just as I have anticipated, this place is not ready to be recognized as a guild hall, so we're going to expand it. Alright, I'm so excited. We're going to have the Magma Workshop running in no time, and that will be the point where we have plenty, plenty of new options because we can then finally make things out of tin. So many new things out of tin. I mean, the value is uh, debatable of sorts, but uh, yeah, well. Because tin doesn't have that much of a high base value. Alrighty. So, let's expand on that. And there's an alert. I don't like alerts. Let's hope that doesn't forebode anything bad. Ah, it's just a human caravan arriving, so that ain't anything bad at all, indeed. So, let's see. Yeah, we get in there now. Very curious to see. So, Regoth made a Dolomite throne. Brilliant. So, let's see, does it have art? No, it's just worth 19 grand. No, nothing else. Nothing special to note here. <laughs> wow. Alrighty. Let's request a broker and check out what our friends have in store for us. If they bring some metal bars, I'm down for a trade. Yep. It ain't much, but it is enough to request some goods for a trade. So these guys will be, we're going to, uh, going to trick them again with a treat of Dwarven delicacies. Personally think this is a nice way of uh, trading with the humans. And the guild hall agreement has been satisfied. Very good. This is what I like to see. So we're going to deconstruct the empty cages now of, uh, out of this guild hall. Because I want to refurnish this place a little bit. And now let's go for a shopping spree. Fire Paul Capuchons. I think they're a little bit costly. But all these logs? Hell yeah. Wow, that'll help. Here in this environment, I'm very, very happy to um, avoid the investment there. So. Apart from that, well, let's buy some more roots and leaves and those things. Food for food, I'd say. And some metals. There we go. Not the worst trade, I'd say. 
For the humans, they can now finally experience dwarven cuisine. What did we actually trade them there? I, I haven't even checked. So, dwarven wine biscuits. They're made out of chopped giant cheetah liver and dwarven wine. Let's check out the rest. I'm curious, you see. Ale biscuits. They're out of minced kangaroo sweet bread and ale. It's a lot of uh, organ food. And minced quarry bush leaf, quarry bush leaf, woven vine, wine, and castle beer. I think the last meal is uh, more like a, a typical dwarven meal. And the mayor has been elected, so. Path, the mayor. Path tunnel construct. So let's check her out. She is a lone anvil member. She's uh, a late lone anvil joiner, though. So she always acts with mercy and compassion at the forefront of her considerations after giving birth to a girl. Oh, she's uh, she's she became a mom during her uh, adventures. She's greatly moved by art and natural beauty, and she's troubled by this since she dislikes the natural world. She's very greedy and she's sloppy with her living space. She actively avoids exciting or stressful situations after seeing a goblin's dead body. So that's uh, still inf uh, influencing her 11 years later. She feels best when everyone gets along without any strife or contention. She can get caught up in internal deliberations when action is necessary, and she's rarely happy or enthusiastic. And she's conflicted by this as she values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. She has a calm, calm demeanor and she's somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusually unusual or live differently from herself. Oh, what a mayor. She occasionally overindulges and she likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract. She tends not to be swayed by emotional appeals and she is stubborn. She generally finds herself quite hopeful about the future and she's not particularly interested in what others think of her. She needs alcohol. Of course they do. That's woven standard. She likes magnetite, steel, rose quartz, bayberry wood, wood. <laughs> Alpaca wool, linen paper, color violet, shields, crowns, and frill sharks for their frilled gill slits. All right, the more you know. And the sight of the lyrics of reticence. When possible, she prefers to consume gray gibbon and foxtail millet beer. She absolutely detests hamsters. Come on, they're kind of cute, Thoth. So. We will have tons of shields and crowns this run. I can already see uh, for for see that with thought. Okay. She needs a mayor's uh, suite, and I think we should let that happen here. Yeah, I think this will be good enough. This area here. So, we're gonna be constructing... Ah, well, let's uh, go for... This way. Let's, let's use the dolomite we got. So, I'll keep that one open, because it uh, came in handy after all. Oh, we could make this a excellent uh, mayor's uh, apartment too. Oh yeah, let's do that. Like that even more. So we're going to make these uh, walls out of metal, I thought, but uh, well, not like this. Okay. Let's floor this place. And get the job done. Well, well. So down here, ah, the Bucket Brigade was fast with it. So that's how fast things go if you actually have a water source. <laughs> Alright, let's pull the lever. And finally get that magma workshop going 
It's been about time. Zoosh. There you see it. So it required like uh, a entire field of water or a square of water to get the job done. So that's why you can't just bucket it on, it on top of the magma. It won't work like that. But it also means that we can now finally open this place for business. All right. So there go the magma forges. The magma smelters. And the glass furnaces. All right, finally. Ha, and we're making the workshops out of the blocks that were sealing the holes beforehand. I like that. Okay. So, first off, let's smelt that Cassiterite ore. Let's see, that's the wrong one. And let's do that repeatedly. So, we also will now order, finally for good, the wooden bins, uh, bin system. So, to make the storages happen better. And there we are. Uh, th there was a slight whoopsie. I, I had the time passing by while I had to take a short break. And obviously we have missed a few things. So, oh dear. Dumont the Clothier has been found dead. Ah, yeah, I remember that one, though. This is, uh, he arrived already dying. I don't know how that came together, but, uh, well... Well, we also have to build a guild wall for the miners, and a new flock of people has arrived. So we we really have quite a uh, wealth of people now here. Lots of children, and I don't feel comfortable with our current safety situation at all. Like, seriously, not at all. So we're going to do what we should do, and that is start collecting sand and melt some things into... melt some glass weapons, I'd say. So we go here for sandbags. Collect sand with the condition of... Sand bearing items. If the sand bearing items are less than 10, we ought to collect sand. We are also going to make now yarn bags and yarn ropes. I also have to fit together the uh, clothing industry rather sooner than later, but uh, one thing at a time. So we are going to make now green glass corkscrews, green glass axe blades, green glass discs, green glass spikes and green glass spiked glass bolts yes so we're gonna order quite uh, stupendous amounts of these items because we want to build traps out of these there we go that should get us somewhere all right so We need a grave for the unknown artifact maker that died on his way there. So it seems to me that what had happened here 
Must have been a case of artifact making during traveling. I don't know. I've never seen something like that, but uh, this uh, this must pretty much what uh, what happened there. It just must be pretty much what happened there. Ugh. Dingo. So we are going to make also tin weapon racks and tin armor stands. There we go. But we won't be needing more than three of these at any time. So yeah, it begins now. So that's that. And we will now put down bed. Chair. Chest and a cabinet. And the usual items of honor. And let's make a separate little dining hall there. So here goes a table. So. Want to make the mayor's uh, office a little bit secluded and uh, private. Okay, so let's do the smoothing job and get that mayoral suite together. There we go. office that's gonna be your dining hall here we go so I hope that this is uh, what it takes for her all right the quality ain't there yet and it needs a chest more but uh, let's just order our fledgling engraver to do something here. I mean, our engraver is really not bad. She started out with a pretty decent skill there. Uh, that was, uh, I don't know, did I, did I configure it or did I just have a lucky draw? I don't know anymore. Anyways, so the Miner's Guild Hall. Well, I'd say we, well, where do we dig that thing? So, that is really a hard question for me. I think I'm going to think about that between the episodes. Right now, there is no real urgency behind that. So, we're going to go and carve in some doors here. And then we can seal off the fortress base entrance and make this uh, rhino meadow basically or line of defense and some glass traps on the side there i think that's the best we can do for now so the weapon traps are supposed to have tons of weapons but it's really important that we only go for glass weapons Otherwise, it'll use all your cool weapons that you don't want to give away, necessarily. Good! So, let's see. Ah, yeah, sand collection can't happen because we ain't got no sand collection spot specified. So, well... Let's make a floor grade for that purpose. There. These are quite useful to collect sand and we're going to make that sand collection spot one well, now right there and then we're going to construct a floor grade on top of it so this way we can prevent that the 
um, floor lichen will grow over it. It's really wood. Otherwise, it might grow over and uh, it is not uh, interactable at any point. Okay, my good friends, that's that for today. I really, really hope you appreciated the Rhino Meadow. Oh, look, we got baby Rhino. See you next time, guys. Leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and of course, check out the description box. Plenty of links to go around down there. And I'd be more than happy if you also checked out Discord, Twitch, or Patreon, PayPal, buy me a coffee, or the channel membership system. Either way, thanks for being around and have a good one. See you next time. Bye-bye.